um, how those flows are controlled and what factors uh, might influence them and how inappropriate control uh, of those circumstances might lead to the generation or continuation of symptoms. And of course, the symptoms that we're interested in are those which I'll describe later, but unfortunately those, uh, <coughs> those are the symptoms which affect individuals with chronic fatigue syndrome uh, and some other similar entities um, such as uh, orthostatic intolerance. B before I go into large detail uh, about what we do, I want uh, the audience to appreciate the fact that our research is not designed to answer the question per se of what's wrong with me, um, how can my symptoms be alleviated or cured. Um, I, I recently in, in a conversation with um, uh, an individual with chronic fatigue uh, described what we do as fabricating an individual piece of a jigsaw puzzle. We know what the whole picture should look like, but we only have the ability and the facilities to work on characterizing or formulating one piece of that puzzle. And the work that we do, the work that our colleagues do, the work that other investigators do, hopefully at some point in the future will ultimately be integrated into a total picture which gives us more understanding of the pathophysiology or that which goes wrong um, in, uh, in, in people who exhibit symptoms of chronic fatigue, orthostatic intolerance, or as Kim mentioned, POTS, postural tachycardia syndrome. Um, the talk that I'm going to give today is eclectic in that it's, it's fraught with scientific terms, um, technical descriptions, and I recognize that the audience that's listening today is a very sophisticated, very well-educated and informed um, a group of folks. Uh, nonetheless, I'll, uh, despite the fact that I'm a New Yorker, I will try and speak slowly uh, and I will elaborate on, on as much uh, as I can. And certainly if there are any uh, issues, concerns, or questions, you can convey them to Kim and when appropriate she will forward them to me. That being said, uh, I'm going to get started and show you this first slide which describes the hypotheses that were proposed to the uh, CFIDS Association when I applied for the grant. And, and essentially, what it speaks to is the fact that when individuals stand up or change their uh, physical position from, let's say, lying down to standing or from sitting to standing, uh, there is an inappropriate transposition of blood from the upper chest area where the heart pumps from and the blood is, uh, is moves to um, uh, reservoirs uh, below the heart and decreased systemic return uh, is impaired and that impairment uh, is what may lead to symptoms associated with chronic fatigue and orthostatic intolerance. Uh, we don't have to go into all of these individually. Suffice it to say that there are many study objectives that were proposed in order to answer the questions that we want to ask. Uh, the first objective clearly is to design a system whereby we um, uh, secure um, and solicit the participation of both control subjects against whom the results from chronic fatigue um, symptom subjects will be compared. Um, it, it sounds easy, but it takes the coordinated effort of many of our staff members, uh, all of whom are um, uh, healthcare professionals, to uh, accomplish this. And we, we solicit uh, invitations for participation here at the medical college through web-based advertising, uh, much of which is supported by the uh, CFITS Association. Once we, we have potential candidates, we then have to screen them to see whether or not uh, they are uh, considered to be healthy, thus 
with service control subjects and whether or not they satisfy the criteria for chronic fatigue syndrome. This gives us the basis for um, comparing these two groups. I might also want to mention that all of the studies that we do since they involve uh, humans, uh, since they involve sensitive health care information, all of the studies that we do, of course, are approved um, as being appropriate to conduct by the New York Medical College um, uh, Committee for the Protection of Human Subjects, the so-called IRB, the Institutional Review Board for the Protection of Human Subjects, uh, and every one of the subjects, including the control subjects, are required to sign an informed consent so they know just what we're doing and what their expectations are. Um, once we've gone through the formalities of uh, recruiting and enrolling subjects, then we do many, many measurements, each of which uh, I'll go into somewhat uh, more detail about. But what we're basically looking for is uh, are, are the differences between control and chronic fatigue subjects in terms of how their blood flow from the heart changes uh, when stressed. And I'll talk about what type of stress we induce uh, in just a few minutes. We're also very interested in looking at aspects of cerebral blood flow because one of the common symptoms for both chronic fatigue and POTS uh, and orthostatically challenged individuals is something that we commonly hear uh, as um, these subjects experiencing brain fog or um, mental clouding and we, we now, uh, we're, we're, we've just published a few papers showing the relationship uh, in, in certain individuals with orthostatic challenge um, and cerebral blood flow. And, and we just recently obtained a device that's called a NEARS, which stands for Near Infrared Spectroscopy, which will allow us to compare changes in brain blood flow measured by um, ultrasound uh, with the level of oxygenation of certain parts of the brain in an attempt to see if we can correlate what changes in blood flow might result in uh, ut utilization of um, of oxygen. We also, uh, because the skin is, uh, can be under certain uh, temperature conditions, the major repository of blood in the, in the body uh, and thus serves as a large reservoir, uh, we look, we're, we, we will be examining, we have been examining and will continue to examine some of the, some of the biochemical um, factors in um, in the blood and in, in the in the uh, skin circulation that may control the pooling or uh, lack of pooling of blood under certain conditions. Um, so those are many of the study objectives.